How are you guys doing? Long time no see. This is Calvin of Team ABS. And while Paul is away in Germany, I'm here to talk to you about Yu-Gi-Oh. Not music like what my head says, but about Yu-Gi-Oh. What am I going to talk about? Well, it's going to be tips in trading. Now, I bet you're wondering, hmm, why do I need to hear this stuff? Well, we play a trading card game. It's in the name. So we definitely need to know these tips that I'm going to provide. How many will I provide? Five. So let's get into them. All right. So tip number one, create a buddy system. If you're not sure what that is, it's basically just a group of friends that you play Yu-Gi-Oh with. The cards are a random when you buy packs, so your friends may end up getting something that you need. A lot of times, it's actually easier to just borrow the cards you need from your friends. A buddy system. I have what you want, you have what I want. You're not playing said deck yet, maybe I want to play it right now. I can go to my friend, I can borrow the cards. He can get cards from me. It's kind of self-explanatory, but it's definitely something people should do more of. Now, one thing to consider when doing this is make sure it's people that you trust. These cards can be looked at like an investment. These cards can be expensive. So you don't just want to go giving your cards to anybody saying, oh, bring this back to me after this trip you going to this 200 miles away from me. That may not be the best idea. So make sure when you're making your, your buddy system, it's friends you trust. They will do the same. Now the last thing to remember while doing this though, is make sure you have great buddy system etiquette. Basically return your friend's cards to them in the same condition that they gave them to you. That also means same rarity, same edition. Don't try to play your friends like that. They were nice enough to loan it to you, give it back. That leads me into my second tip. Don't be afraid to trade down. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game where formats change, decks change, what you play change. You don't need every card in Max Rarity. A good example of that could be Ash Blossom. You have, this, you have the secret Ash Blossoms, you know how much they are worth. Supers are coming out. You could technically trade your secret for supers and then get other cards you need to help finish your deck off. Why does that seem like a great trading tip? Mostly because think of it this way, you can get more bang for your buck that way. The card is still playable in this different rarity, but you're also getting more that you need. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't do enough of. You can't just be focused on making everything look pretty. You want to use the deck, you need the cards. Trade down, get it. So basically, don't be afraid to trade down. Make a teams come out, reprints happen. You don't want to be stuck there having formats passing you by. You're not allowed to have fun playing a deck because you want cards in max rarity. Go ahead, let those cards go. Get the reprints, finish off decks. Have fun playing the game. And you will have way more fun if you trade down and actually finish decks and get to enjoy the chance of playing. So that leads me to tip number three which is something I see way too much. Stop hoarding cards. You can't build every deck that's out. You can't play every deck that's out. Regardless of how many shoes you see behind me, we can only wear one pair at a time. You can only play one deck at a time. You have to trade in order to get the cards, unless you're just gonna buy them, but still. What I'm saying is, I understand having multiple decks and having decks to play, but after three, how many of them are you going to actually play competitively? Some of those cards that's in those decks can go towards other cards that has use immediately. That's something that you should be trying to work towards. So stop hoarding. You don't need every deck that come out from a set. You don't need every deck that's about to come out. Find what you want to play, focus on that, and let the extra go. I'm pretty sure that this is an experience that all of you have experienced at your locals. It's someone that has many decks and they have a card that you want. This deck is in a binder, so you know they're not playing it. 
and you know you need that card for your dick to play today. And they tell you, no, I'm not trading it. I'm holding it for this dick for who knows when. You don't want to be that guy. You want to be the guy that knows what he's playing, is playing what he's playing, and trades from those extra decks to get the cards that he needs. Value trading tip. Put it to use. Tip number four. Trade with future releases in mind. So tip number four. Trade with future releases in mind. What I mean by that is, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game where we have the OCG so we know what could come out months from now. TCG sets. We know what could come out a month from now. Structure decks, stuff like that. If you build ahead, you're able to trade ahead. So if you possibly think, hey, this is something I might want to play when this come out. This archetype looks cool. What do I play in there? As you find out, decks you're moving from, you can go ahead and trade for cards you may need for the next deck that you're moving to. Out with the old, in with the new. Keep that system going. You can always stay ahead of the game. Ahead of the game, I know you like that. You can stay ahead of the game. And that's basically what it comes down to. Tip number five. Don't be a value whore. Every trade you do does not have to be exact value. No one wants to deal with that person. You don't want to deal with that person. Trading becomes a lot easier, I guess, in a way when you kind of put the pride aside and you just don't be afraid to take a loss. That $3 difference is not gonna hurt you. They have a card you want, you have a card they want. Trade it. It's just that simple. Once you start nitpicking, trying to get exact values, it actually makes trading harder because people remember that. And then they're going to do the same thing back to you and you're going to be frustrated. So just break the cycle. You want this, I want that. It's around the same, four or $5. We don't care. Let's make this trade happen so everyone is happy and everyone can play the dicks they want. Make trading easier. Now don't be a crash dummy. I'm not saying go out and trade your Phantasmate for a cap shell because you've thought of some broken combo that uses cap shell or something. If it's a few dollars off, Go ahead and make the trade. But other than that, that's all you're trying to do. Finish your deck, close the value, get it done. In closing, these are five tips to make your trading life easier. I've seen too many times people try to get trades and just by not following these simple tips, both parties just leave a little bit more frustrated. Trading is not that hard, so don't overcomplicate it. But you guys let me know what tips you follow. What tips I might didn't say that you think should be added. Put it down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe also. Because Paul is gone. So we running this. So it's Calvin. And I'm out.